Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. 2D Tile Map is a powerful tool that provides you with a simple way to create two-dimensional environments based on a grid layout. In 2018.3, Unity is adding support for a new type of grid, which allows you to make isometric levels. Today, we'll have a look at how to set up the new isometric tile map as well as all essential workflows that will help you get started. All of the assets can be downloaded from the description box. This tutorial is based on one Unity blog called Isometric 2D Environments with Tile Map. This amazing blog provides several short videos and a bunch of text explaining how to set up isometric tile map in Unity. So much great Unity blog i never seen before. For me, when I first read this blog, I was so excited but a little confused about several certain steps. So I made this video for beginners and hopes you can learn fast. Alright, let's open up Unity 2D project. First thing first, drag the resources folder into our project. In this tutorial, we will only use the plan folder sprites. We need one folder to save our tile palette. Also, we need one folder to save our tiles. By the way, tiles are assets that are arranged on tile maps to construct a 2D environment. Each tile reference a selected sprite, which is then rendered at the tile's location on the tile map grid. In order to change the background color applied to the screen, we can select solid color and choose to the dark color. There are several types of tile map we can select. Rectangular tile map, hexagonal tile map, and isometric tile map. Select create new palette. Choose to the isometric option and keep the menu default custom cell size value. Press the create button. Select the pre-create folder to save our planned palette. Drag and drop sprites from the assets folder onto the tile palette. Choose where to save the new tile assets. New tile assets are generated in the selected folder and the tiles are placed on the tile palette. Sometimes we might too wish to edit the arrangement of the tiles in the palette itself. Just below the toolbar, you will see an edit button. If you click it, you will go into the palette editing mode which the tools will affect the tile palette itself. Don't forget to exit out of this mode once you have made the desired changes. We can switch the select button and move button to edit the arrangement of the tiles in the palette now. We can select one of the tiles and use the move button drag to the empty place. But it's not working very natural yet. We can try again. We seem to select the bottom of the ground and move this tile. The problem happened on our palette. So we can double click the palette prefab. We can change the tail anchor to 1 and try again. Cool, now it looks perfect. We can select the tails and change their positions. You can create one new tile palette and drag the race folder sprites into this new palette. In this case, we simply grab all of the sprites in the race folder and drag them over into the tile palette window. Exist the prefab mode, change the tile map name. Don't forget to click the edit button again to unlock the palette for editing. We can use the box brush to paint our ground tile map now. This tutorial is not included the root tile and the isometric Z as Y tile map. We will talk them later.
to attach another tile map to the grid, right-click on the grid game object and create a new isometric tile map. Don't forget to change his tile anchor to 1, and change the sorting layer to 1, because we want our elevate tile map as render over the ground tile map. Now we can select one of the tiles and brush on the ground. However, our tile seems to look unnatural yet. Some tiles should be covered by others. We can go to Edit and select the project settings. Simply find the graphics entrance in the list on the left, and you will see a transparent sort mode drop down, as well as the X, Y, and Z value settings for the transparent sort access. By default, the transparent sort mode access in Unity is set to 001 for XYZ respectively. However, all of our 2D tiles are actually on the same Z axis. Instead, we can determine which tiles are behind or in front of their heights on the screen rather than their depths. Tiles which are positioned higher on the screen will be sort behind those which are placed lower. To sort the tiles based on height, change the transparency sort mode to custom, and set the transparency sort access value to 010. Now we can continue to build our level tile map. Now, we can drag and drop one player sprites to the hierarchy. In order to see the player, we are going to change the sorting layer order to 10. However, it looks unclear and pretty small. Click the player sprites and the pixel per unit to 16 and choose to the no pointer flitter. Let's create one C-sharp script called player movement. adding the rigidboard 2D component to our player because we will use rigidboard.velocity in our script. The gravity skill should be zero because we are making top-down game. Also, I use circle collider 2D component to define the shapes of our player physical collisions. Inside the script, we can simply write the basic codes on here. If you want to know the detailed explanation of each line, you can watch my this episode. Today, we are only focused on the isometric tile map. Back to Unity, now we can control our player on the ground. Well, the player is working onto the areas directly because we did not add collisions on here. There are many approaches to add collisions, but in our case, we want the player to ascend and descend along the levels using a ramp. We can define collisions by hand using an additional isometric tile map. Change the tile anchor 1, 1, 0 and change the sorting layer order to 2 or 3. Create one new tile palette called Colliders. Select the isometric grid and press the Create button. Let's save the new palette to our Palettes folder. Double click our Collider prefab and change the tile anchor to 1, 1, 0. In this project, we have created some sprites that correspond to the different shapes that we will use to define our collisions areas. Now, we can drag and drop all of the collider sprites into our new palette. Save them inside our tile folder. Also, arrange their positions. If something is wrong on palette, 
You can of course double click the palette prefab and manually change the tail anchor band to 0, 0, 0 and replace them again. Exist the editing mode and try to brush our tail on the scenes view. We did not see the collider tile because our current sorting layer order is zero. This is our basic ground tail map, and his sorting layer is zero. This is the elevator area tile map, and his sorting layer is one. As for the third tile map, collider tile map, the sorting layer order should be at least two. Now we can brush our colliders. If you want to see clearly, we can also add a custom material in our tile map render component in order to tint the tiles a different color that is distinct from the rest of our level. Try to decrease the alpha channel, I will feel that visual effect will be better. Once we have placed our collisions tiles, we can add a tile map collider component to the collider tile map. This will auto generate colliders for each individual tile based on the shape of the sprites. We can also add a composite collider 2D component and make sure tick used by composite on our tile map collider. This unifies all of the individual colliders into one big shape. Additional change the rigid body component body type to kinematic in case of falling down by gravity. Press the play button. Now our player will be stopped on the edge of the colliders and our character need to find one path to walk around the map. Cool. If you don't want to see the collider tile map material color, when we are in the play mode, we can create one simple script called Hide Collider Color. Drag this script to our tile map and double click the script. Actually, we only need to uncheck the tile map render component at the beginning of the game. We can get access to the tile render component by using tile map namespace and set the tile map render component to false inside the star methods. Adding decorations to the levels is quite simple. You can edit manually place the decoration sprites at any desired point in the scenes, or you can attach the decorations to the tile grid by making them into individual tiles. You can decide which approach works best for your case. In this tutorial, I choose to manually place some decorations around the level. For example, I drag one tree sprites to hierarchy and change the sorting layer order. Give him one box collider 2D component and change the collider size. By the way, you can define a custom physics shape for the object within the sprite editor. In this case, we choose to add the collider component yet. Press play. Well, we don't want our player always walk in front of the trees. We want him can walk behind the trees as real. 
For this work, we need to make sure the trees and the character have the same order in layer, allowing our character to sort behind and in front of them dynamically. Now, use your imagination and make your own level. In order to lock something different, you can hold Command or Control button and select several random sprites and change their color and size. Just make your level look more diverse. Also, you can add one camera control script to the main camera. For detailed coding explanation, you can click on this episode. Alright, this is the end of this tutorial. In the future, we will talk about how to use real tile to automate the tile painting workflow. You can download the demo project and check the original Unity blog from the link below. I hope this tutorial can enhance your experience using isometric tile map. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. For more videos about Unity tutorials, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and game design, you can click my profile and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next time.